It's a gorgeous day today. It's a lovely day to fly. My first impressions are that it's bigger than you might expect on some other economy products. And immediately, it feels like such a significant step up from the low cost carriers. I'm sat in the middle where the seats are kind of tight. I'm not gonna lie, it's not that comfortable. It's pretty basic, pretty fitting given that we're in basic economy, so. Welcome, Welcome to New York City. City. We're here on the roof of the actual Point Sky offices with my two pals, Mark and Liam. And today it's transcontinental battle day. We've battled these three airlines in business and we've also battled them in premium economy, but never economy. Liam, who are you going to fly with? I'm flying with American Airlines. Mark, who are you going to fly with? I'll be with United. That leaves me with Delta. We're going to see what the experience is like from New York to Los Angeles on this premium route on these three airlines. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. It is a gorgeous morning in New York City and I've just arrived at JFK's Terminal 4 which is the home of Delta here where I'm going to go and check in for my economy flight. So I've just stepped inside this enormous terminal and as you can see it is very spacious, really big, very bright and more importantly it also seems pretty quiet, calm and relaxed at the moment which is good news for an economy flyer like me today. The self-service check-in looks very empty indeed so I think I'm going to go and drop my bag over there. I'm at Terminal C here at Newark right in front of the United's check-in area and there's hardly anybody here. Now there's three ways that I'm seeing that you can check in. You can go stand in line and wait to get served face to face to check in your bags. You can do it yourself at a self-service kiosk or if you check in on the United mobile app like I did, you can check your bag ahead of time and then go to this bag drop shortcut which will save you a ton of time if the queues are pretty long, which they aren't today but I already checked out online so let's go to the bag drop shortcut. I don't know if this is weird or not, but I've always had a complete obsession with bag tags. They just look so nice. I think I was maybe like a check-in agent in a former life. I think I do it really well as well. Do you know what I mean? I have to say, so far, I am really liking what I see. Last year, in 2022, they actually completed a lot of redevelopment and expansion here. I don't love all of JFK, but this feels clean, massive, very pleasant indeed. Public service announcement, get global entry. It's like a hundred quid just over. You get it for five years. It means you don't queue really when you arrive at passport control in the US. And you also get TSA pre-check. So it means that you don't queue as much. You don't have to take your laptops out, your shoes off. And so it just made it all that little bit smoother and better for me, but you can do it too if you've got the right passport. I have to say, it really does feel so empty and quiet here. I actually can't believe the amount of free seating that is around me. It definitely makes it a far more relaxed, nice experience. I gotta say, this is one of the nicer seating arrangements I've seen outside of a gate. Got lights and charging ports at each table. And on top of the tables are QR codes where it looks like you can order food from just about any one of these restaurants up and down the strip. Super handy if you've got some things to take care of and don't really have time to go grab a bite and wait in line. They've got a nice setup here. I dig it. I dig it. Tough to get a good coffee in America, but this was from somewhere. Looked like it was almost barista made, but not quite. But do you know what? That's not bad. For the US, I'll take it. There she is, the A330-900neo. We're about to board. It's a gorgeous day today. It's a lovely day to fly. It's a lovely day to fly a flagship aircraft of an airline. If you're gonna fly economy on Delta, this is really the one you want to be on. So the way the gate is set up, there are two lines. Line number one, which is for groups one through two, and then line number two, which is for groups three through five. I'm in group number three, and I think I'm supposed to be boarding now, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and board. Morning. Here we go.
Welcome aboard this Delta economy seat. My first impressions are that it's very comfortable, lovely padding. There's a forward cabin and the front of that forward cabin is economy plus. So there's like more leg room there, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit of a different seat design. But even back here, the leg room is pretty good. There's plenty of room for me to waggle my little legs around. There's a sturdy and solid tray table. There's the usual seat pocket. There's quite a big and sharp in-flight entertainment screen, bigger than you might expect on some other economy product. There's a charging port, both for normal plugs, but also for USBs. The seat has a headrest, which moves in on both sides, provides a nice bit of support. And there's a recline on the seat. By pressing this button, we can slide all the way back. The bottom of the seat on the seat slides out a little bit. The back slides back. Well, here I am. I've just sat down and immediately it feels like such a significant step up from the low cost carriers, the likes of Spirit, Ryanair, EasyJet. I've got a nice big seat here. As you can see, it has an adjustable headrest in this five and a half hour journey. If I want to take a little nap, then I can. The seat itself feels very comfy, nice soft padding. Definitely not those sort of like hard back ones you might find in low cost. And while we're here, let's do the all important recline test. And that is a very decent amount of recline. There's plenty of leg room beneath me, as you can see. And on the seat back, you have the standard little storage compartment where my passport is at the moment. I know people don't like me storing my passport there because they think I'm gonna forget it, but I haven't so far, so fingers crossed. There's also a really handy charging port on the seat back. And then continuing up, we have the tray table that clicks out like so. It's not the biggest one I've ever seen, but for a flight like this, it will certainly do the job. Finally, we have the IFB screen, which if I do the Liam Spencer hand test, you can see it's not the biggest in the world, but reminder that this is a domestic flight. I'm on a narrow body jet in economy. So I think having any kind of IFE at all is a really nice touch. And then just finally, you can see on the bottom of the IFE screen, we have a headphone jack. We have a space to charge your phone. We have another little socket, which I'll tell you what, I don't know what you'd use that for, but nice to have anyway. So overall, I think that's a pretty damn good setup here in economy. I've just sat down in my seat, we boarded, and there is a full flight here. And I'm sat in the middle where the seats are kind of tight, but we'll make do. Now right in front of me on the seat back, we've got a tablet and an iPhone holder. Right underneath that, we've got a pretty standard sized tray table where you can fit about maybe a book and a drink, a pouch with in-flight entertainment. And underneath me, in terms of leg room, you don't have too much room to stretch out your legs here. It's, it's pretty tight in the cabin. Right by my feet to either side of me are two charging ports. It doesn't look like there's any USB ports, so you're gonna wanna bring plug-in outlet if you wanna charge your iPhone, iPad, any sort of device here. Now the seat itself, I'm not gonna lie, it's not that comfortable. Again, it's a full flight, it's pretty tight. Above me, we've got three air vents, one for each passenger, three lights. That's about it, there's not much here. It's pretty basic, pretty fitting given that we're in basic economy, so. Now there's only one amenity that comes with a seat, and that is this little blanket. Pretty soft. No pillow to accompany it, but nice touch in case you get cold on your flight and want to take a nap or something like that. The thing I haven't been given on this domestic day flight is any kind of amenity. There is not a pillow in sight, let alone a fluffy one. No blanket, no amenity kit, nothing like that. I do feel like most economy seats come with a pillow and a blanket these days, so I'm quite surprised not to see one. Anyway, I have been given some headphones if I get to my IV screen, so let's give these a go and see how good the quality is. To be honest, those aren't too bad at all. They're a little bit crackly, but the volume itself is very good, and I've actually got to turn it down from the maximum setting because it's too loud. Not noise cancelling, but as economy headphones go, they will certainly do for the rest of this flight. In terms of amenities, there's not loads, but there is this. A blanket. Don't always expect this on domestic flights. I guess this is quite a long one over to Los Angeles, but the blanket is soft, gonna keep you warm if you get a bit chilly. Alongside the blanket, there is one more amenity. I've just been handed out these headphones, which is very handy. Although I do recommend having a little Bluetooth plug so you can plug in your own headphones onto these uh, screens. But very nice, complimentary headphones. Don't always get that. I've been on international flights where you've had to pay for these.
well, we're about 40 minutes into the flight and I've just been brought my lunch and I've got a turkey and cheese sandwich along with a little uh, sea salt caramel chocolate brownie and fruit and nut mix as well. This is all completely complimentary, didn't have to pay for it. So nice to have free food even in economy. About an hour into our flight and we've just been served a nice little snack for the road, for the air. We're not on the road, this is the air. I opted for coffee with cream and sugar and Biscoff because that's just a staple of the flight experience, so why not? Snack box is available for $10, but for $12, I've got this flight fuel box, which has dried apricots, fresh apple, cheese, some chocolate, it's got some, a nice real selection. There's also a chicken salad sandwich available for purchase, but I've gone for this more like fresh, fun snack box with fresh apple in it. Now my ticket doesn't come with any sort of meal service uh, included, but, United does have a selection of snack boxes and hot meals from their bistro. You can get burgers, paninis, salads, oats. Good to know that you have a larger selection of food in case the in-flight snack doesn't really cut it for you. So in terms of drinks, you can get the full suite of teas, coffees, juices, waters, but also spirits for free and beer. I think it's a little bit early for me to be on the booze, but nice to know that you can have it. And had this flight have been at 4 or 5 p.m., I might have got involved. The important thing to say here is that it's all complimentary. And not only that, big size, American vibes, big cans, all these silly little cans that they give you in, in Europe. That's what we want to see. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed with that sandwich. It's not offensive, but the bread is very dry. I would have appreciated sort of like more toasted, melted, hot sandwich. I didn't realize it was gonna be cold. It's perfectly fine, but for a full meal, I actually don't think that is a particularly impressive main. So, sorry American, that's the first bad bit of feedback I've got about the flight so far. So there's no hot food available for purchase, but it's nice that you can buy these snack boxes that have real fresh stuff in them. Sometimes those snack boxes, they did have the ones that are kind of boxed up with dried fruit and nuts and stuff like that, but you want to keep it healthy, fresh stuff, got it. Well, there's only one more thing to do. It's the Corp Bell Challenge. Let's go. I did. Could I get a cup of tea, please? Hiya. Um, will I be able to get a Diet Coke by the shop? Well done, American. That's definitely under a minute, right? It's been about 10 minutes and nobody's come. I think I'm giving up. There we go, that is Touchdown in LA, the City of Angels, and we are 30 minutes ahead of schedule, which is pretty impressive. Had it not been for the food, I think it would have been a really good flight. I just think that element has let them down a little bit. And I can't believe that on a five and a half hour flight, you didn't have an option to order any hot food. But I am impressed with the efficiency of boarding and the entire check-in process at the airport. And then the seat has been comfy, you know, I am getting to the stage now where I'm very much looking forward to disembarking, stretching my legs. Overall, it's a pretty solid economy flight today. So I've hopped off the plane at LAX here, which means it's time for my final thoughts. I was in basic economy, so again, it's going to be pretty basic, pretty stripped down. The seat, not super comfortable for a six hour flight, especially if you're crammed in the middle. It was an assortment of food that you can order and pay for, which was nice in case the snack service didn't cut it for you. Now the call bell challenge. I pressed the call bell and about 10 minutes flew by and nobody came to check in. Now somebody did come by about 15 minutes afterwards and they were so nice, super nice. I'll leave you with this. To me, it's more of a necessary evil if you're traveling from New York to LA than something that I would recommend over another product. But all in all, I made it here in one piece. No major speed bumps, so. You can't complain with that, can you? I'm on the ground now at LAX, just watching my bags being offloaded from the plane back there. And I was so impressed with that flight. Those economy seats were super comfortable. I was really impressed actually with the free snack offering, drinks that were full size, and also the meals that you could get that were these fresh snack boxes and sandwiches. 
It was really good. I was really impressed. Overall, I think Delta Economy is a brilliant way to fly transcontinental. I would definitely choose to do it again. I'm a bit of a Virgin Atlantic boy, and so earning points uh, for Virgin is a little bonus for me on that. But that was Delta from New York's JFK to Los Angeles on the AP30 900neo. Done.